This is a Fox Sports presentation. Oh, hi, Mr. L Mr. Long. Just getting ready for noon. B for Villanova. B for victory. Hey, man, what's that new? You don't know? Look out for the dog. Dog, dog, take a big bite. What's going on? Louisiana Tech, Bradshaw's alma mater. <laughs> Every year at the beginning of the season, we all go out in the courtyard, sing our college fight song for the staff and the crew. Kind of a preseason pep rally. Get some psyched up. Get out of here. I'm serious. Oh, man. Oh. One victory today. JV, you got a second? Sure. Man, it's about this fight song. Hey, Ronnie, outstanding idea, isn't it? Man, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I can't sing. Well, look at it this way. You've got one hour to practice. See you at noon, big fella. 10,000 men of Harvard. One victory today. Hey, fellas, he bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Get started here, Ronnie. Man, why do I have to go first? Rookie, rookie rule. Okay. <clears throat> oh man, forget it, forget it. Here we go, here we go. Line and sinker, huh? Hey, man, I'm sorry. Football already? You got it, smart guy. <laughs> it's kickoff 96, and the super season begins right here on the one and only NFL on Fox. For these Lions, Herman's the big cat is the NFL's leading receiver. But the Vikes won't back down because Warren says beauty before age. Down. The cards hope this swan song is a victory dance with Boomer as their new conductor. Indy came up one play short last season, but now this marshal is laying down a new law. In Atlanta, the Falcons' Jeff George is armed and dangerous. While in Carolina, the Growlers went from rough and tough to mean and green. Last year, Rodney flew the Eagles into the playoffs. In D.C., Gus now has the job. The Bucks brought in a king of D named Dungy. But the pack is back, and MVP Brett's leading the way, while Reggie preaches nothing but the hard truth. The Niners won't forget last year's disappointment at the hands of the Packers. Steve is ready to rock, and Mr. Jerry is ready to roll. But the Saints would love to host their own super party. Now, live from the Fox Television Center in Hollywood, four guys who made it through our two-a-days and still managed to look pretty good. Your co-hosts of the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. And welcome to the Fox Television Center as we begin our third year of the NFL on Fox. Coverage this year culminating in New Orleans, Louisiana and Super Bowl 31. It's kickoff 96 and today the march begins. 30 teams, all with one goal, and that is to become Super Bowl champions. And hello, everyone. I'm James Brown, and welcome to Fox NFL Sunday. My partners are back from their summer breaks. Mr. Armor All commercial, Terry Bradshaw, Howie Long starting his second movie, and the rookie, Ronnie Lott. Now, keep in mind, Ronnie does replace Jimmy Johnson, who does have a sensitive side and couldn't allow us to start the season without a pep talk. Jimmy Johnson. First of all, guys, best luck, all right? And, Ronnie, I don't know how you're going to deal with these characters. I mean, hopefully, J.B. will protect you a little bit from Howie and Terry uh, because they are truly a trip to work with. But I know you're going to have a great show. You know, I know that it's going to be rated the best there is, just like it was when I was there. Now, try to you know, hold up the standard that I set. All right, Terry? <laughs> of course, Coach. I know one thing. You need to get some rest. You don't look good at all. Look at those eyes, yeah, huh? He's got that personal trainer. He dropped 20. <laughs> 
Ronnie thinks playing for the Jets was a bad experience. By the time we get to New Orleans, my man, you'll be wishing you were back with the Jets. JB, my brother, take care of me. <laughs> my, my, my brother, brother. I love that. <laughs> 15 years in the National Football League, 10 is an all-pro. Oh. We're glad to have you here, Ronnie, no doubt about it. All right, folks, now that we've set the stage, time now to find out what's happening around the National Football League. Raiders owner Al Davis has told staff members he wants his team off to a fast start or he'll replace head coach Mike White after five games. Now, this wouldn't be a precedent as Davis fired current Bronco coach Mike Shanahan after four games back in 1989. And don't believe the reports that Baltimore has offered Tampa Bay draft choices for holdout Eric Rett. There have been no trade talks, and the Bucks are prepared to play without Rett, who is protesting his current contract. All right, Tuesday is the big day in Tampa. There will be a new stadium referendum vote that day, and voters are split so evenly, league officials feel the Bucks' performance today could swing the outcome. And you can bet that if the stadium vote is defeated, the first reaction that we'll hear Cleveland, here we come. All right, and Miami's Jimmy Johnson feels he may have his quarterback of the future. Craig Erickson, who played for Johnson at the University of Miami, will sign a two-year contract worth $1 million tomorrow. And he's also expected to replace Bernie Kosar as Dan Marino's backup. All right, folks, time now for our Fox Watch in to get things going. Let's send you out to RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C., where the Redskins will be hosting the Philadelphia Eagles. And getting set to kick off a record 16th season together, our own Pat Summerall and John Madden. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, JB. And the story here is about the quarterbacks. Rodney Pete will open the quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. He'll wear a knee brace. He's taken every snap in practice, but he'll wear that brace throughout most of the year. And John uh, North Turner has given the nod over Heath Schuler to his quarterback, Gus Farratt. No matter who quarterbacks, there's a totally different atmosphere on opening day. Uh, and there's a lot of excitement. In the, and this is the fun part of it. You know, you go through... The off-season, the mini camps, the training camps, and nothing counts. And today, it starts to count. And when it starts to count, the adrenaline flows more. The intensity goes up. The knot in the stomach gets bigger. And you can just feel it here. And, and now, they count. This is what they're all starting for. This is what they're all waiting for. And you wonder about that third and fourth quarter. You know how these teams are all playing now? They play their starters a quarter. They play them a half. And now they have to play in that third and fourth quarter. It's hot out here today. But I think this crowd and the excitement will give the players so much adrenaline, they'll get through it. And you know, if you're going to have an opening day, you have to have everything to go with opening day. So you have to have bunting, and we got it here. Look around the stadium. This is opening day of the NFL. We even got our bunting. Then if you're going to have bunting and you're going to have opening day, you have to have someone throw out the first ball. And we figured, what the heck, how can you get a better guy to throw out the first ball than the old Redskin quarterback, Sonny Jurgensen? He threw a lot of touchdown passes here. He's in that ring. Thanks, Pat. Former Colts defensive guru Vince Tobin brings his Arizona Cardinals to Indianapolis, where there are high hopes for the Colts following their Cinderella playoff run, road victories in both San Diego and Kansas City, and then the AFC Championship game in Pittsburgh to play everybody remembers, leading to the expectations here in 96. I think people expect the Colts to uh, win more games and to, um, you know, go to the Super Bowl. Some people here in town do anyway, and, uh, and that's good because we, we expect that of ourselves, and we wanted that respect. So uh, we have it now, and now it's time to go out and prove it. So Jim Harbaugh and the Colts begin their 1996 journey today against the Arizona Cardinals. Now let's head east to Charlotte and Sam Rosen. Thanks, Kenny. A beautiful afternoon here in Charlotte as we get set for the first regular season NFL game at Erickson Stadium. And everywhere you go, you see Panthers, including six of these huge Panthers outside the stadium. They are eight feet high, 22 feet long, and they weigh a ton each. Inside this beautifully decorated stadium, you see more Panthers everywhere. There are fan-friendly lounges throughout the stadium, and the locker room for the Carolina Panthers stretches 45 yards long. On the field this afternoon, we'll see the first-round draft pick of the Panthers, Tim Biakabatuka. He missed most of the preseason, but he'll go as far as his conditioning will take him. We won't see Rocket Ismail. He's inactive with an ankle injury. For the Atlanta Falcons, they have their run-and-shoot offense ready to go. Their wide receivers who were injured, Bert Emanuel and J.J. Burden, will play. They're ready here in Carolina. Right now, let's go out to Minnesota and Dick Stockton. 
All right, Sam, thank you very much. And if this game is anything like the last time they met, Thanksgiving Day at the Silverdome, we are in for a shootout, a high-scoring affair, won by the Lions then, 44-38. to But there are a lot of question marks on the defensive side for both teams. As you know, Ed McDaniel out for the year for the Vikings at linebacker. They had hoped that Darrell Talley, the veteran, would play. He won't play today, and that will be the first game he'll miss in his 13-year career. Lions also struggling at linebacker, and they will have three new faces at that spot. Chris Spielman is gone. A couple of veterans will be playing today, and Pepper Johnson and Michael Brooks, they haven't had a chance to practice much. A lot of questions for the Lions defensively. If anyone has a comfort zone in this game, it would have to be the Minnesota Vikings because they have won their last nine home openers. That's the story from here. Now let's go back to James Brown. Thank you very much. And for those of you not getting an early game, you'll either see New Orleans at San Francisco or the Battle of the Bays, Green Bay at Tampa Bay later, right here on Fox. Now, going back to that New Orleans at San Francisco game, what does it say about San Francisco's offensive line? They were once one of the deepest in the league. Steve Wallace gets cut by Philadelphia last week. He's starting today for the 49ers. Yeah, I see it as a desperation move, but when you talk to the 49ers, they say Steve Young wanted him and Carmen Policy wanted him. 19 lineup changes in that offensive line since the beginning of 94. But I'll tell you what, on defense, there's not a problem with their defensive line. In my mind, this could be the best starting front four in professional football. If New Orleans becomes one-dimensional as they have been in the preseason, Jim Everett could be ducking for cover. And I talked to Eric Allen. Eric Allen told me that he's going to use three different rushers on Steve Wallace. They're going to use Miklo, they'll use Stokes, and they'll use Dixon. Dixon gave him a lot of problems. I think also you'll see them banging Jerry Rice. Eric says we, we got to get our hands on him, so we got to go, go after these guys and take it to him. Who knows the Saints better than me, right, guys? Who's plugged in with New Orleans? Me, the kid, that's right. I can't right. argue with you. Well, they know for one thing, 49ers only have two real cornerbacks, and that's Israel and Drakeford. And, the, and you're going to see the Saints come out with four wide receivers. What's that going to do? they got to come in with somebody to cover those guys. And the Saints don't think the corners are that good. Look for Everett to have another big day and another upset. Saints Scary. Win. Real quickly wow. about Bill Ronnie, Walsh. we don't have time. Wow. Real quickly wow. about Bill Walsh now. He was brought in as a consultant to improve this team. Has he or will he? He has. He's done his job. He's taken Steve Young, Mark Tressman, put them together. Now they're happy. They're on the same page. I think they'll win a lot of games this year. All right. That's not a suck-up to New Orleans this year. That's a real world, huh? No, I, I never do that. All That's right. No, you know that, James. All right. All right, folks. We've only just begun. Here's what else is on tap for today's show. Today on the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. <laughs> A late night Colts bolt in 84 left the city of Baltimore stunned and football free, but their wait is over. Eric Clemens is in the Raven Haven as Baltimore welcomes the NFL back to the charm city. Then the Packers' Brett Favre had climbed to the top as the NFL's best, but something was wrong. Pat Summerall sits down with the league's MVP who confronted his problem and now is out to prove himself worthy on and off the field. And just a few months ago, Jimmy Johnson was holding down your basic desk job. Now he's back in the heat of the battle. Pam Oliver has a game day talk with Miami's new head coach about his much-anticipated return to the game. Coming up. Coming at you, the one and only Fox NFL Sunday. Has helped you do more, and by Adidas. And welcome to the Fox Television Center and Fox NFL Sunday. You know, folks, it is truly an exciting day for the folks in Baltimore. After 12 seasons, it is once again home to an NFL team. Our own Eric Clemens is live in Baltimore as the Ravens prepare to face the Oakland Raiders. And Eric, I know being from that area that folks are indeed happy to have NFL football once again. Absolutely, JB. In a word, they are wild. And last night, they welcomed the NFL back to Baltimore before a big party and before the rocket's red glare and bombs bursting in air on Baltimore's inner harbor. In fact, about 7,000 fans turned out to welcome the Ravens and officially end an almost 13-year NFL drought for the city. And a little bit later, about a mile from where Francis Scott Key pinned the words for our national anthem, they were treated to a spectacular fireworks display. Now, meanwhile, Memorial Stadium, as you might be able to see around me, is all dolled up and everybody's ready for its NFL return and for a sellout crowd that's going to file in here in a little bit. Meanwhile, many of the fans are continuing the party outside in the parking lot, and for some of the locals, they have a personal interest. Twelve years ago, somebody took something from me, and I'm here to get it back. 
Well, it's about time. Uh -huh. it's, it's about time. We're, we're all looking forward to it. As you can see, all these guys around here having a good time. We are the Ravens. We deserve this. And we are back, baby. We are back. Well, as you can tell, just about everybody's ready for football back here in Baltimore, at least almost everybody. You see, we followed a police officer out to the stadium today, and he's so unused to the NFL, he took a wrong turn. But as you can see, we made it to the stadium in one piece. That's the story from here in Baltimore. Now let's send it back to Hollywood. I had to get that one out in the first week. And James Brown. JB? All right, Eric, can you take a right turn and get back to the Inner Harbor and try out some of those Maryland crab cakes, buddy? <laughs> okay, I will. All right, folks, time now to check out what else is going on around the National Football League. Check it out! It's week one, and the playing field is even, as today the journey to New Orleans begins. KC clashes with the oil slicks. The tribe may have visions of the bayou, but even with six straight postseason berths, Bono and company always get scalped in the playoffs. The oil, meanwhile, have their own dome advantage. They've greased the Chiefs the last five times in Houston. The Cats and Rams tangle in St. Louis, and for Cincy's Blake, his weapons are loaded and aimed at the Crescent City. And oh, now Jeff's got even more artillery. Mr. Kata is healthy again. The Rams, well, they've got a new Duke in town, and he'll throw to Sir Isaac. The Steelers look to avoid speeding Jaguars in Florida. Last year's AFC champs can again see the promised land, as Mr. Cower won't try a QB triumvirate. He says it's Miller time. The Jags are nowhere near New Orleans, and today they won't be near Natron, who's out with a bum thumb. Seattle and the Chargers get it on in San Diego. If the Hawks are ever to see the Crescent City, Mr. Myra must make in this make-or-break season, or simply hand the pill to the All-Pro Chris Warren. The Bolts, meanwhile, have won seven of eight from Seattle. A return to the big show would be jazz to Junior's ears. The J-E-T-S fly to mile high to battle the Broncos. And with Keyshawn and O'Donnell at the helm, the green machine is miles closer than a year ago. As for the Bronx, a new John, rookie John Mobley, could put the D back in Denver. Tonight, Buffalo shuffles off to battle the Giants. The experts say the Bills vets are geared for another super run. But in 96, the G and G men is not for good, but for good luck. Monday night, the boys and the Bears. While Dallas fields an incomplete squad, so too will the Midway Monsters, as Mr. Salam is salami with the bad hammy. Nevertheless, it's the Pokes who begin their trek for their sixth title, as they could launch a bit closer to Super Bowl 31. You want to go through your all Dallas, Chicago tomorrow night. And I know you and I talk football till about 1 o'clock this morning, man. You feel that the game plan that Chicago ought to use against Dallas is the same that all teams ought to use the first five games against Dallas. If you look at the Dallas Cowboys, the Dallas Cowboys, uh, their 18 touchdown passes thrown, 15 were caught by the tight end, Jay Novacek and Michael Irvin. They both will be out of this football game. Emma Smith rushed for 25 touchdown. Howie, I would stack the line of scrimmage and make Troy find a new hero in that offense. I agree with you. You know, you look back over the last three years, this team, when trailing at the end of two quarters, is 4-10. and ten. Trailing at the end of three quarters, 4-11. and 11. This is not a come-from-behind defense. If that offense sputters, it'll be interesting to see how that light, nickel-type defense reacts to having to come back. And how he look, man, I talked to Charles Haley and Nate Newton. Attitude's a problem. They're not sure if they really want to play this Monday night. So I'm, I'm really curious about this team. Are they want to be champs or do they want to be chumps? Oh, right. champs or chumps? Shot wow. right off the bat. Already. Unbelievable. All right, like folks, it. there's a lot more to come in today's show, including Brooke a Green. conversation with MVP Brett Favre of the Packers. He's back with something to prove. And speaking of quarterbacks, there's another one with something to prove. Gus Perot of the Redskins, he's the man on the spot in D.C. And we'll have a day of game interview with Jimmy Johnson, who's not afraid to give players a piece of his mind. You didn't have it. The only way you have it in the is on the ground. Don't anybody say you could have made it. His is on the ground. That's the only way I know. Mm-hmm. Well, the Eagles' Rodney Pete will be wearing a brace because of a knee sprain, hoping that it won't yeah, affect Bob. his ability to connect with Irving Fryer, who caught eight touchdowns last year with the Dolphins.